So let me get this straight. So demons are okay when they buy stuff. Oh, I got you. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for the T.S. Madison Experience. This is season one, episode five. And yeah, you heard me right. You heard me right. Demons are okay as long as they buy you something. It'll all make sense in a minute. Let's chat, okay? Anyway, we start off here. <clears throat> Maddie and Hope actually um, are actually meeting up and uh, Hope is another trans woman that has actually appeared multiple times on the uh, Maddie in the Morning show. She is an activist. Um, she fights really hard for the rights of trans people. She does, she does, she does. Miss Hope, she's beautiful. Um, which has nothing to do with nothing. She just actually, you know, I, I love the fact that she actually is beautiful. And that's one of the things that we're actually seeing here with Maddie and Hope. Because um, generally, whenever trans folk are shown on television, it's a brick. I mean, I, I'm not even trying to figure out no nicer way to say it. It's a brick or it's a caricature of what is possible. So... You know, as time goes forward, we are starting to see more of our trans folks that actually look as though they belong up front and on television. Just like the cream of the crop is what you actually see on television in the hetero lane. We want to see the cream of the crop on television as well with the homosexuals and with the transsexuals. You know, don't always try to put what you think is the worst representation of us on television. Put the pretty girls on TV, too. Put the pretty girls on TV, too. That's just the way it is. And when it comes to, like, homosexual males, it's generally the the pretty pretty boys that you see on television. Um, they throw them up. But when it comes to trans folks, They'll try to find a trans person that looks as much like a man or someone who's having a real rough transition. They're not going to go find someone who really looks completely passable and you can't clock them. They're very... We're, no, that's not who we're putting on because people aren't comfortable. It makes them nervous. We'll be nervous. Sit up straight. Anyway, Hope and Maddie are sitting down and they were speaking about family interactions and um, pronouns. It's a big one. Because what we're finding is that Maddie, Maddie at home is still referred to as Tim, which is her boy name. So a lot of times her brothers will still call her Tim and sometimes Miss Mary even has a slip and calls her Tim, most of the time you'll hear Miss Ma uh, Miss Mary call her Boo, you know, but never, I don't think I've ever heard her call her Maddie or Madison. It's, she usually calls her Boo, but, you know, there's times that she slips and may call her Tim. It's all part of the transition. That's why it's called a transition. It doesn't happen overnight. None of it. None of any of it happens overnight. It is a process. But what we find here is that Maddie's father still refers to her as son and, and, and Tim. And it was kind of weird because when you, you're hearing the story, it's like he wasn't actually in Maddie's life. So the son thing struck me funny. But we'll talk about that more as we go forward. Let's go. Anyway, but she actually called her her father on the phone and and basically proved it to. Hey, son.
I guess. Anyway, moving on. Chef Holly. Lord have mercy. So, listen, you know we're, they're having a, taking an RV, and they're all getting in this RV and going on down here to Miami. So, Chef Holly is the one that's going to drive the RV. They find out the day of when they get ready to leave, Chef, Chef Holly has never driven an RV. And I believe it's 12 plus hours, and she ain't never driven an RV. Listen, let me tell you something, Chef Holly, girl. What you're not going to do is brush up your road skills at my expense, sis. If you don't get somewhere and sit down. But she jumped on over there, baby, and she was getting it. Mm -mm, she wouldn't have got it with me. She would not have gotten it with me, baby. Listen, she would not have cut her RV chops with Milan or Spill It Boy in, in no ma'am. Chat, but I'm funny about that anyway. I like literally, I don't like being driven around. Listen, I've been driving since I was 15 years old. 15 years old. Now, for those who aren't all that great at math, honey, that's 34 years. Do you understand? 34 years that I've been driving myself around. I am not, I just am not, come. I don't jump in cars. I don't really like riding buses. Now, I can't fly a plane, so I'll get on the plane. But I generally drive, like I'll tell you in a minute, oh, I'll meet you where we're going. If I'm going to get balled up, let me ball me up. So I know I would not have felt comfortable jumping back, um, in there with Chef Holly and her non-RV driving ass to go nowhere to the corner store. No, no, Holly this not happening but right then so they found that out and then while they were finding out things they find out chef holly ain't no lesbian they all thought chef holly was a lesbian chef holly ain't no lesbian child <laughs> chef holly's a chef and that's it i don't know where they got all the rest of that, that she was some fierce old driver and she was uh, uh, a lesbian and all this stuff. Chef Holly is a cuisine queen, honey. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Y'all clowning. Anyway, moving on. They're on their way, baby. Um, Chi Chi. Chi 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 Chi. Chi-Chi, why can't you spell Craig? Chi-Chi, you done been with Craig how long? How long have you been around Craig, Chi-Chi? How you spell his name? What was it, C-A-R-I-G or C-A-C-A-C-A? -A -A I think it was C-A-R-I-G. It was wrong is what it was. I, I can't even, because I can spell, so I don't know. He was spelling it wrong. But the thing about it is he was consistent and he was adamant, honey, because he, he was throwing down a good read. He said, yeah, I know how to spell bitch. It's, I'm just going to spell it this way, C-A-R-I-G. You spell bitch, C-A-R-I-G. You spell bougie, C-A-R-I-G. No, Chi-Chi. You don't spell any of those things that way and the most important part, you don't spell Craig that way, honey. It's C-R-A-I-G. But it was hilarious. It was hilarious. I told y'all I love Chi-Chi. I love Chi-Chi. And the reason I love Chi-Chi is because it doesn't matter if it's right or it's wrong. Chi-Chi, once he gets it in his mind, he is true to it and he is going to stand it. He stood in that wrong spelling. Do you understand me? And he spelled that shit wrong 50, 11 times. And was up there with his chest poked out and thought he was reading Craig to the ground. I say, <laughs> Chi Chi! <laughs> he thought he was reading old Craig to the ground. I said, Go ahead, Chi Chi. <laughs> oh, Chi Chi. That one, that was a miss, sweet, sweet Chi Chi. That one, you, you was reading Craig, but it kind of boomeranged and tore you up, babe. But I, funny, funny.
funny, funny, funny. A mess, a mess. Love my Chi Chi, honey. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Child, trying to call Craig a bougie bitch in here. You done put it out there that you can't speak. <laughs> Oh, Chi Chi. Moving on. So, uh, they get down to Miami and we get to Miss Miss Mary's house and they were having, you know, some deep talk, you know. They were looking around on the walls and there were pictures of the brothers and Maddie as Tim, you know, and they were having some conversation about all that. And then Maddie was telling a story about one time when her brother, I think it's the youngest brother, um, that found some lipstick. And I think, I guess he was pretty young, really young at this time. And he had done put the dog on lipstick on child and got his ass tore out the frame, honey, by Miss Mary. Now, Miss Mary denies that that's the way the story went. Maddie said, she don't remember, child. She don't remember. So, that was what it was. And we gonna leave that alone. I ain't going no deeper with that. Miss Mary said it ain't happy. Maddie said it did happen. Um, but the whole point of the thing, that ain't even the important part. The important part was that this was this this little situation kind of led Maddie to the whole thing of feeling as though it's time for me to get up out of here. It's time for me to get up out of here because I'm already having an issue. And I don't want my issue to become an issue for my younger siblings. So it's time for me to roll on up out of here. This is too much. And this is what happens with a lot of trans people. But I say that all the time. When, in my mind, I feel, if I was ever going to transition, I would leave. I would leave. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to transition and live where I came from. You're transitioning, you need a new start. So get the hell up and roll get up and roll because one thing about people people are petty and people don't really like change especially when they can't control it and they don't like what they don't understand so i gotta be bothered i get the hell up out of here because if you transition nobody's ever gonna let you forget it that's just the way it is life is not fair i did not make the rules but I just always felt for me, if I was ever going to transition, I would roll. I would leave. So I understand it. When somebody I meet, and they're, they're trans, and they say, oh, no, I'm not from here, child. I'm from so-and-so. Yeah, it, I never even questioned it because I wouldn't live in Pittsburgh. If I, if I was to transition, I would not live in Pittsburgh. I wouldn't live anywhere near Pittsburgh. And I would leave, and I would never look back. I would never look back. My mama here. You know, I ain't saying I wouldn't come back to see her, you know, but I would I would never live here. I would never live here and function here for what? Try to start your old life. Leave it on behind, honey. Be done with it and move on. Because, again, people don't ever let you forget. And it's not that you need to forget, but they're just ain't going to let you live, honey. They ain't going to let you move on. They just ain't, people ain't wired that way. They ain't it. So, that's that. Um, moving on. Tiffany and Maddie. So Maddie has this idea. You know, she has an idea and they're going to move on with the idea. And what we find out that it's, it's loud, live, and in color. Which is basically, this child is setting up for this whole, basically her own talk show. She's talking about she wants to do her own talk show. But she kind of basically is setting up the whole house herself to do this. She's setting the studio up in the basement. She set the studio up in the basement. And from what I'm looking at, it seems as though Maddie owned, she got it all set up how she wanted or in the process. And all she needs is a network to pick it up. Okay? And we won't talk about that in a minute. But she's telling Tiffany a little bit, but not gonna give you all the details, which you never do that. You don't give everybody the details. Your stuff, as she was telling her, you know, she said, girl, she said, I'm laying here on this couch. She was at her mom's house, laying here on the couch. And she was just kind of going over a little bit, telling her, you know, I need you, girl, this, that, and the other. And I'm saying to myself again, no, you don't. But whatever, you know, that's my own thing. No, you don't. 
Um, you can have her as a guest, but no, you don't need her. But anyway, but Maddie, hey Maddie, hey girl, what you doing, honey? You laying up there on that couch, been staying all perched, honey. Foot, just white, girl. I understand. You know how this melanin is that I got? It pops. But girl, when I jump out the shower. Let me go jump up on a goddamn phone, girl, without lotion. And I said, where is Chi-Chi? Chi-Chi, your mother needs you, honey. I said, Chi-Chi must be staying at a hotel. Because I, I think the rest of them stayed at a hotel. or Because Miss Mary's house ain't big enough to accommodate all of them. So I'm thinking they must have stayed at a hotel. So where the hell is Chi-Chi? Maddie was laying up on that couch, baby. You see that white pillar back there? That's what Maddie's foot looked like. Maddie's foot looked like she had been kicking flour all night, just as ashy. <laughs> I said, you know what, we TV, what y'all not going to do? Y'all not going to do my sister like this, Maddie. She's sitting up there. <laughs> looked like she got her foot rested inside of some beignets, honey. Them feet was just as ashy. I said, oh, damn, Maddie, damn. Where's Gigi? You know, Chi Chi always be oiling up her feet and stuff. So I seen that and I felt, and I know y'all seen it. Don't be laughing at my damn sister, honey. Y'all leave her alone. But see them two white pillows, honey? That was Maddie's feet on the couch, child. <laughs> I love you, girl. Just the same girl, but the feet was white, honey. Feet placed in beignets, honey, crossed, had them crossed at the ankles, laying up on the couch, talking mess, honey. I said, look at her, honey. Anyway, but she's talking to Tiffany and all of that, child. So then we got Legra. Now, Legra has her job. She's supposed to check on the house while Maddie's out of town. So this is, that's like I said, when we see the house and what she was setting up, she got everything. It's all sectioned off. It looks like it's going to be really, really good really groovy. We got one section where the stage is. There's another section where Mo is going to be. And then there's a section, there's a kitchen area down there. And then there's also a green room. I said, oh, she's setting a, a real live studio, like for real, for real. I said, you better come on, girl, and build you a miniature little uh, Tyler Perry studios down in that basement. That's what's up. That's what's up. And I bet that did cost a grip, honey. But that's, listen, get it how you live, bitch. Get money, bitch. I'm here for it. So, like I said, it seems as though she got everything pretty planned out. And all she really going to need to do is find her a network to pick her up. But that is Maddie style, ain't it? I love it. Moving on. So, Maddie and the boys were actually out. And she made this comment, child, where she talked about Seeing people, you know, it's like she said, I don't really like, I don't be thinking about coming back down here really and stuff. So, you know, you see people from back in the day, child, they look just as old. I said, girl, ain't that the truth? You know, I do, and there's something I do, and I'm not trying to be shady, but I look, and um, the aging process in my family, and, and I'm just, I'm going to go ahead and pat myself on the back right now, okay? I'm going to do it. The, there's going to be a haters that ain't going to like it. Let me tell you now, come in close, my loves. And look, I'm getting ready to pat myself on the shoulder. I am 49 years old, okay? This is how the, the aging process kind of looks in my family. My grandmother passed. She was 93. My grandmother still looked very much like she was just approaching her 80s, okay? So it, that's how the aging process is. My mama is 70, okay? 70. 70. She don't look 70. Okay? This is how the aging process kind of works in my family. And you need not know. Now, yes, I'm tapping myself on the shoulder. And yes, that is good for me. It's good for me. It, it, it works. It works. But I know, without a doubt, it is a complete blessing. It is a blessing to sit before you and tell you I'm 49 and know in my heart, no matter what you say, that I don't look 49. Great fucking beard and shit and all, I don't look 49. And I know it. It is a blessing. That is a blessing from up above, okay? 
But I knew exactly what Maddie was talking about when she said, you see an old raggedy that you you see that probably didn't even want nothing to do with you or was calling you names back in the day and now they trying to holler at you and you looking at them like, is that a missing tooth? Yeah, I said it. I know exactly what you're talking about, Maddie. I look, and sometimes I see people that I went to school with, and I'll be like, oh, shit, honey. <laughs> I know we went to school, but damn. We went to school together, but somebody would think that I was the student, and you was probably the janitor when I was there, because you look old as shit, honey. So, anyway, I understood that, and I got a little kiki and a little chuckle in my belly when she said it. Moving on. Yes, indeed. People will do that and always want to holler. Child didn't want you when times was good. I damn sure don't want that now, honey. No, no, honey. Stay away from my good stuff. Beat it, honey. Anyway, uh, so Maddie ended up taking the boys down onto the host stroll, honey. That's where they went. Down to the host stroll and showed them, you know, this is where I used to work, you know. And she was laying some real knowledge on them. It brought back memories. It brought back memories. See, because Maddie's not the first trans woman that I've ever met. You know, I had a, a very good friend. She has passed on, but she was a trans. She wasn't trans. Let me take that back. She was a working girl. She wasn't trans. She was actually a drag queen, but she was a working girl. She hung out with a lot of the trans women. So whenever I visit her, and then she was from the DMV, okay? And whenever... I hung out with her, you know, she showed me a lot and she she taught me a lot um, of things. And this was when I was literally in like my 20s. And she was like, yeah, this is this. Same thing Maddie was doing with them. Took her down to the host stroll. And this is what was going on. This is how it goes. This, that, and the other. Child, we went during the day and also back during the night. And she's like, yeah, bitch, this is what really goes on. And my eyes were like, Bitch, what? So this is why I am so knowledgeable about things. Um, I have had trans girlfriends in the past. I've had other girls that are working girls in the past. Maddie is not the first of her kind that I've ever been in her presence. So when she tells her stories, I really am engulfed in what she's talking about because I do understand what she's talking about. Uh, not firsthand, but we'll say secondhand, okay? I understand what she's saying. I understand about the danger of it and all of this. So um, she really is not pulling your leg when she's telling these stories. These are real stories. This is like when you see me talk about Pose and some of the stuff where I tell you that first season of Pose, all that shit, that stuff is true. Those are true things that happen. You know, those are things that really went on in the ballroom. You know what I mean? They they dramatized some things, but trust me, you know, when it comes to dealing with us, the LGBTQIA and then the little subsections, the trans community and the ballroom community and all of us and the drag queens, honey, you don't need very much drama to finish our stories because we dramatic as hell. <laughs> You ain't got to over-dramatize us, baby. We already did the work for you. That's just the way we are. So it was interesting, and it brought back memories when she was actually telling uh, this part of her story. And um, it's so funny because I was looking, and it, it can be uncomfortable. It can be very uncomfortable because it's a lot to take in. And Craig, oh, Craig. It's daytime. It's daytime. Okay? And I was looking at Craig's body language. Craig was taking in everything she said, but Craig was looking around like, okay, girl, we can go now. We can go now, bitch. I said, yeah, we get it, girl. We can go now. Charles, daytime. Can you imagine if you took Craig down there at night? <laughs> oh, Craig. I was screaming looking at Craig. But it, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, and especially the story that she was telling, you know, about you know, running from the police and, and, and jumping in cars. And I said, I, child, I get it. 
I get it. But I was laughing at that Craig County. He was truly looking around like, okay, child, that's crazy. So that was interesting. Anyway, and after that, we see this phone call between Legra and Tiffany. So this is the plan. Legra's going to kind of sneak Tiffany in. This is the plan to get her in. And Legra's just being hopeful. She said, you know, I got to be 100, which is very Legra. And I found out um, through this, Legra's a Capricorn. Legra's a Capricorn. understand. <laughs> so I understand why Allegra does and says some of the stuff that she does and says. It all makes sense now. But any, anyway, oh Allegra, <laughs> oh Capricorn out of yes God out of Anyway, but she was like, I got to keep it 100 now. Tiffany then backed out quite a few times, honey, so I hope she make it. I said that's that Capricorn, honey. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Moving on. Here we go. Now, here's where things got very sticky. And this commentary is kind of rough because y'all know I do know Maddie personally, okay? I do know her personally. She's a friend of mine. And um, I have a whole lot of respect for her, okay? So... This is touchy. It's touch and go. Anything's touch and go when you know the person, per know them personally, even if I didn't know her. Because we're talking about her parents now, okay? Even if I don't know her, just talking about a person's parents is mm, touchy. But I got to say what it is I got to say. Maddie's father is a piece of work. Quite a piece of work. Um, me personally, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Couldn't and wouldn't. Especially when I grew up the same way she did. Because she didn't grow up with her father in her life. He wasn't around. Maddie was being raised by her mother. Her father abandoned the job. I was raised my mother. Okay, you hear Maddie talk about her mother and her her auntie. I was my mother and my grandmother. My father wasn't around. So any judgment that my father had towards me didn't mean a goddamn thing to me. And I wouldn't give a goddamn what he had to say. But Maddie, in her adulthood, is seems to be forging some type of relationship with her dad. Because did I hear correctly, something about her buying a car or something. I swore I heard something about her purchasing a car or something like that for her dad. Somewhere in some of this commentary, somewhere, I heard something about her her giving money and him asking for money and accepting money from her. And... They end up having this conversation, and this is the conversation because the whole thing is about, you know, she said, I want to talk to him and let him know, you know, I'm not comfortable with him. You know, continue to call me son and want to call me Tim. He needs to use my proper pronouns, you know, just out of respect. And she led into the conversation. She was very overly respectful of him. You, you all know the mouth that T.S. Madison has. She was overly respectful. Which you should be. What's your father? What's your father? But he wasn't. He wasn't. He grinning and skinning and shinning and carrying on and being disrespectful as hell while grinning. Happy to be on TV, if you ask me. He was so happy to be there to spew his rhetoric. Everybody got something that they want to do. Everybody got something they want to portray. He had no problem. And I'm going to give him this. Hats off to you, sir, for being willing, willing to be ignorant. 
He was willingfully ignorant to want to spew what he was spewing on television because he knew just as well as we do what this television show is all about. And he wanted to spew the fact that he can't accept her transition. Couldn't accept it. And then he got deep with it and told her that, uh, you know, I have a certain type of class that won't allow me to refer to you as a woman. Really? And what kind of class is that? Is that the same kind of class that will allow you to accept my money? The fuck? Yeah, okay. And then he went a step further and told her, I, you know, I don't know what kind of possession this is that you got. And she said, oh, so you think that I'm possessed? Yeah. And he also handed around that something had to happen to her while growing up is why she turned. But you weren't there then. So who you faulting? Because you weren't there. You walked away. So how dare you even bring it up? See, there was a lot of problematic shit going on with, with uh, Papa. But he was he wanted her to call him Pops. She had called me Pops. And that's why I thought it was kind of weird. Like, he, she didn't grow up with him for him to be, oh, son this and son that. Like, really? Okay. But I, mm-mm, mm, -mm, I, mm, -mm. Yeah, his intent seemed to be very much that of, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm taking this opportunity to let people know I ain't with this shit. That was his too for me. I ain't with this shit. So, you think she's possessed. And as I said when we first started this, demons are okay in your world as long as they buy you stuff. Is that correct, sir? Okay. And on that, like I said, that is Maddie's father. And I don't want to go too much deeper with it. But I ain't got him to do. I ain't got him to do. Um, if she can keep that together and forge a relationship, I don't know. Everybody deserve a chance, I guess. She better woman than me. I pay. Demons are okay as long as they spend their money. I'm out of here. I've seen enough.